for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kathleen Moss, and I have my biggest following on YouTube on a channel called Estrogen Diaries, but I've also recently started a podcast called A Breast Cancer Diary, and so this um, video slash audio will be airing on both. I got home from Burning Man one week ago today, so I've had a little bit of time to decompress, but all of the memories are still pretty fresh in my mind. I want to clarify that I am not your typical burner and I am not an ongoing burner. This was my first trip to Burning Man and probably will have been my last one. I'm a 51 year old American WASP, which stands for White Anglo Saxon Protestant, which to me means somewhat uptight. Um, and so I am not the typical Burning Man candidate, but I went because I had heard so many great things about it from friends and also because this year was the year that I lost my mom and I knew that Burning Man would be a really good place to grieve and let go of my mom and the memories of her. And so my main ambition in going there was to volunteer at the temple as a temple guardian, which I did. I spent about 15 or 16 hours during the week at the temple. And that was definitely the highlight of my trip to Burning Man. I was there for just under a week and I had a, somewhat of an RV experience for camping without air conditioning in the RV. We did have access to a couple respite places that had a little bit of air conditioning. Um, and my main companion was my friend Avina, who was a guest recently on my podcast, A Breast Cancer Diary. Avina was a, a guest on my podcast just in the last month and you'll see in photos of her if you're watching the video on YouTube that she's the one with the red hair. She dyed her hair red in preparation to go to Burning Man. And Avina was 72 years old on our trip so that also kind of colored the expectations that I had for what we would do and how adventurous we would be. I did not want to be terribly adventurous and neither did Avina. So we had that in common. So this is definitely not your review of Burning Man from a young person's or an adventurous person's perspective. All those disclaimers aside, I had a really lovely time. Um, my expectations, of course, were somewhat off. I had never heard any negative criticisms of Burning Man, so I had very high expectations. Um, the parts that were hardest were not the parts that I expected to be hardest. I expected the wind and dust and heat to be the hardest things that we encountered physically. But what ended up being true was the heat wasn't actually too bad this year. We really lucked out with that and we didn't see a whole lot of wind. Um, but the fumes from generators were actually my main complaint and the washboarded roads that we had to ride our bikes on were really, really rough on my body and especially my neck, which I've had a lot of um, pain and stiffness and injury to in the past. So that was something I was not expecting. I was expecting my eyes to be dry and dusty and so I brought eye drops with me everywhere and that helped a lot. But I couldn't get around the huge distance that a person generally has to travel by bicycle. Um, I couldn't get through that obstacle with all of the rutted and washboardy roads that we were biking on. So that was a real hindrance to getting around. Um, thankfully, I was near the edge of the city, and so I was able to squeak out the side and go out to the temple on my bike without a whole lot of washboardy roads, because the temple's in the middle of the desert or the open playa, which is not a roaded area, so less tendency for washboarding. So that was good. I have a map here of the city. I had no idea how large the city was, but we were over about midway through at the 2.30 point. And a lot of the like workshops and fun things that I wanted to do were over here. And I just had to give that up. Um, just had to let go of some of those expectations. Some of the more frustrating things about Burning Man were the cynicism and sarcasm element from the top down, like there was just a lot of cynicism and sarcasm um, and trickery, and that was not fun for me. Uh, I think the way that I experienced that was in some of the graffiti art, 
Um, it seemed like there was a lot of factionism there, the hippies and the non-hippies kind of hating on each other. Um, and then also in the planning and publicity of different events, um, there seemed to be some trickery there. And so that was really unfortunate and disappointing. I would go and traipse across the desert to get to a henna workshop and the henna workshop would end up being some kind of ecstatic breathing or orgasmic breathing exercise workshop and I was not interested in that. Um, so that felt really misleading and disappointing. And I think that some of that is intentional and intended to really test people's senses of humor and openness to change. And I'm not a super flexible person and I'll be the first to admit that. So that was hard. Um, I really was excited about a number of workshops that I didn't end up getting to go to. But one that I did get to go to that was pretty pleasant was a Shibari workshop and that is the art of Japanese um, rope and harness making. The art of the rope itself on a woman's chest has been really interesting to me, especially since I lost my breasts and I've seen the art of shibari used as a decoration on a flat woman's chest before and I wanted to see it on my chest. Unfortunately, it was kind of a mass-produced workshop and so the rope that they could afford to provide for us was cheap nylon rope and it was extremely irritating to my skin so while ideally I would have liked to keep my rope art on for a couple of days or maybe even the rest of the week I was only able to keep it on for a couple of hours and I wasn't able to wear clothes over it because it was super irritating to my skin. So um, lesson learned, if I ever go back to Burning Man, I'm going to bring my own high quality cotton or hemp rope with me to do another shibari uh, on myself. But that was a really good experience and I'll always remember that as just a very kind of individual and unique experience from Burning Man. I do feel like I missed out on a pinnacle experience uh, similarly on actually that same day I had the goal of making it to a 530 event in the center of the city where breast cancer survivors were going to be walking together to the temple and it was so hot and I was so tired from volunteering and doing shibari and riding my bike that I just had to collapse and I couldn't make it to that event and that could have been a really amazing experience. The double experience of the body positivity and safety of Burning Man uh, around nudity and then the experience of being with my breast cancer sisters who most of whom I hadn't met yet. Um, Avina was a breast cancer sister but she wasn't up for that trip either. So if we had made it, it would have been a really pleasant experience, I think, and it might have even been a really powerful um, and image-changing experience, potentially, but we didn't make it to that one, and that's really, really disappointing to me. Um, I could only do so much, and that day was just not the day for that experience. But I did get a lot out of being, like I said, at the temple and volunteering there and spending many, many hours among other people who were grieving. And that was, I think, really my main goal and priority for my time at Burning Man. And the main reason I was willing to spend that much money on a ticket to go um, travel 12 hours and, and be miserable in the desert. So I did achieve I think even more than what I expected to by being present in the temple experience. The temple experience was more than just a grieving experience to me. It was an ecumenical experience. I experienced the melding of all these different spiritual traditions and religions in such a peaceful way. And the cooperation and um, just the, I think solidarity is the best way to describe it. Just all of these very, very different individuals with very different values sitting and weeping or um, meditating or just dwelling on the losses in our lives together in spite of all of our differences. Um, there were joyful moments and celebrations. There were very, very sorrowful moments and um, grieving times and most of the music that was shared or sung 
was pretty somber in the temple, but it was just an amazing experience to be in a place that was welcoming of all religions, spiritualities, and backgrounds, in a place where everyone was welcome to come and to grieve and to acknowledge their losses. That was also so temporary, that was there just for one week as a whole entity. And then it, at the end of my time, when I was on my last shift, it started to be broken down by the builders, the people who had assembled it in the first place. They started to break it down. Um, the outer walls were put in against the inner part of the temple in preparation to burn it. And the burning of it is something that I missed also because there was like an amazing dust storm just as we were leaving and we left a little early to get out of that dust storm. And that dust storm made the temple burn pretty much invisible. Um, my friends that were there said that they saw kind of an amber glow through the dust and there was no wind in the moment of the burning of it, so that was good. People could be out there and watching it through the dust. But it wasn't terribly visible, which would have been disappointing, I think, to me if I had stayed. But just the temporal nature of it, just the fact that it was there in its beauty and its all of its meaning and all the meaning we poured into it with all of our memorials and our art and our words and our songs and our tears, all of that was so meaningful and yet it was burned at the end of one week. Just the power of that and the just spectacle of that was really life-changing for me and I'll really miss not being there for that week, I think, for the rest of my life. Um, Maybe I will go back for it. Maybe I'll go back and be a temple guardian again, but I'm guessing I probably won't, but I will always be thinking and imagining what it might be like to be there for that because it was just very profound and exactly what I needed having lost my mom. And the week before I left for Burning Man, I learned about a good friend's diagnosis with metastatic breast cancer. So. I was thinking about her and our community a lot during that week and during the hours that I spent in the temple also. So yeah, there were a lot of things that were sad at Burning Man, but most of the things were joyful and peaceful. Uh, there was a lot of offering of gifts and hugs, and I loved those. Um, almost all of the gifts and hugs that I got were very welcome. and. Uh, just blessings for sure but there was one hug in particular that was very triggering for me as an individual who survived uh, physical and sexual abuse um, there was one icky moment and one icky hug that I would love to be able to take back and of course you know you're not going to be able to avoid some of those um, exceptions and I think the intentions were all there for amazing generosity and amazing sharing and I really felt that there were so many physical and non-physical gifts that were given um, one of the gifts that I received the first gift that I received was foot washing and my feet weren't dirty yet because we had just gotten there but it was just such an amazing experience that I want to experience more in my life as a result of that and it was kind of like a pass it on chain of foot washing. So you got your feet washed by someone that had gotten their feet washed by someone that had gotten their feet washed by the original people who lived there at the camp that was doing the foot washing. And then you turned around and washed someone else's feet. And it was that kind of reciprocal chain of events that was really powerful, I think. And then lots of just really convenient gifts and then little beautiful gifts of art. And then big gifts of art. We took an art tour and saw the big, huge art installations that were spread all over the emptier part of this circle. It's filled with like 380 pieces of art, either in the center here or out here in the outer part of the desert that doesn't have streets or camps. Um, so that was pretty amazing and vast and astounding. My favorite art installation was a multi-piece Art, uh, piece of art or installation of art that was depicting a sinking ship and a sea monster that was protecting the ship. 
it had like a whole myth built up around it and there was a symphony performance one night in front of it and we made it to that and I'm so glad that we did because that was a really memorable part of the experience. Something I didn't expect was that the city, the part with the roads where you're camping with everyone else smashed in, was pretty um, ugly. It was not an aesthetic experience like the desert part with all the art was. So kind of in contrast to the beauty of the desert where the art was, there were just lots of dusty cars and old RVs and lots of generators and big buses and small buses and vans and just kind of crammed in together and then every couple blocks you'd see a really beautiful camp that had a beautiful tent with a nice presentation but it was like a long time between those things and so I didn't realize how unesthetic the bulk of the city was going to be that was kind of surprising you don't see in the YouTube videos how ugly some of the parts of the city can be and some of those streets just had endless amounts of cars and, and no beautiful tents to break up that monotony. One thing I learned toward the end of my time there is that there was a place called Hushville where most of us older folk kind of tend to congregate after they've been burning uh, burners at for a number of years where there's not any all-night techno clubs playing music and you can actually sleep really well. So if I did go back, I would look for a camp in Hushville to sleep in because that was definitely an issue. The vibration of the techno music was just felt in your body all the time. Couldn't really get away from it, night or day. And that's not really my kind of music, so that part of, of it wasn't very enjoyable. I was actually surprised how little music I encountered that I did enjoy. If I found like a 70s or an 80s tune playing then I'd be so excited and start dancing in the streets but most of the music was techno and club music not something that I enjoy hearing for very long and I guess I would say that to my surprise that's what most people were there for and I think that's the reason I'm not going back is I didn't feel a sense of unity around the real purpose of my being there with most of the people who were there I feel like most of the people who were there were there to party, to dance, to hook up sexually with other people, strangers probably, and just to have a time of kind of debauchery. And that's not what I'm about and that's not what I'm interested in and that really saddens me um, to see that happening. And I understand it's a stage of life that most human beings do go through. Um, I just don't really want to be privy to it. And so I, I guess I expected there to be more of a half and half of people there to learn, to explore beauty, um, and not be partying the whole time. But I do feel like the majority of the people were there to engage with substances and or sex. Um, and the music constantly vibing through all of the camps was kind of a constant reminder of that and I think that that kind of wore on me in terms of just my my sense of innocence and purity that I try to hold on to um, in my life in my day-to-day -day life and so that that was kind of a drag for me and I think that's probably why I will struggle with not just going back to the international event in Nevada, but also probably my local events, I imagine, will be mostly that kind of scene. And I probably will be a little bit too old and uptight to really um, mix in and relax and enjoy that, even for all of the beauty that the local and the international temple would bring to me in my life. So, yeah, I, I learned what it was and what it was for me and I'm glad I went. Um, it was a huge financial expenditure, something I don't usually, you know, kind of fork out a lot of money for uh, an event that is recreational. But this one really was spiritual for me and that's why I went. So I guess I can call it more of a spiritual event for me. Um, some things I really wanted to learn about that I didn't get to learn about because of 
the crazy heat and the distance and the roads being hard to traverse uh, and the mismatched scheduling and mislabeling of workshops were I really wanted to see what ecstatic dance was all about. Um, I like to dance um, and I would love to learn more about different forms of dance, especially freeform dance like ecstatic dance. So I was really sad that I didn't get to experience that. Um, I also really had hoped to do some sort of like circus performance or Cirque du Soleil kind of performance and didn't get to access that. Um, and then sound bathing, I was really curious about that and I didn't get to find that the way that I was hoping to. So there were parts of the whole Burning Man experience that I didn't get to access that I wish that I could have, especially if this was to be my one time there. But maybe I'll be able to experience that here in my own community since I live in a very artistic state. So I'm not giving up on finding those things here locally. I'm more determined than ever to learn about them. So that's my summary. Uh, I think that I got a lot out of the experience and most of what I expected because my expectations were really pinned on the temple experience and I did enjoy that very much. Um, our camp also gave away espresso over ice cream in something called an affogato bar, which I had never heard of before. It's an Italian tradition. And I was really blessed by that experience of just giving away ice cream and um, being hosp showing my hospitality and using my gift of hospitality in that way with my campmates and really bonded over that experience with them. So I, I spent a, a lot of hours with them too, and that was really good time spent that I will always remember fondly. And really it is all about the people that you're with if you're going on an adventure like this. And so I'm glad that I had those enjoyable younger people for the most part to hang out with. Um, and also Avina, who is a really central figure in the whole experience and a, a real touchstone for me and a place of calm for me, which I really needed while I was there. So, yes, if you're in your 50s and you're thinking about going to Burning Man for the first time, I'd say do it. Um, you'll find your way around the obstacles. You'll find your way to the more meaningful aspects. You may never go back again, but it's worth doing once for sure. And I will see you in my next video and or podcast. Take care.